Defensive Player of the Week, Nate Lambin. How's it going? We'll open it up to questions. Nate, uh, first, can you just talk about uh, receiving that honor last season? I know you had a good game, but to uh, be able to be named Pac-12 Player of the Week, what does that mean to you? Yes, yeah, it's, um, it's been one of my goals ever since I've started being recruiting. Um, I love the Pac-12, grow, grow, uh, been growing up watching the Pac-12. It's definitely one of my goals. Um, I can't take all the credit. Um, we had a great play from our defense, and I, I obviously can't do what I do uh, without my D-line, without my secondary there to help me. Nate, I'm sure when you watch film, there were mistakes that was, were made, but 16 tackles in your first start as a middle linebacker at the stadium where the Broncos play against one of your rivals, could you have managed a better start? Um, honestly, no. I'm a little star. I'm still a little starstruck myself. Um, I just went out there, played my game. Um, you know, we had a great scheme that whole game. Um, I got great coaches behind me, helping me out there. Um, some mistakes were made, but um, I just made my. If I made a mistake, I was doing it 100 percent and uh, just playing my game. Obviously, you probably won't have a game like that every game. But how do you keep that momentum going into the next game and beyond that as well? Um, just get better every week. Um, Coach harps on that. Um, you know, taking it one day at a time. Uh, so we'll watch, we had practice today, we'll watch that, we'll learn from mistakes we made today, and then we'll get better for tomorrow. And so continue to do that each and each week. Um, hopefully that will get us better. Hey, Nate, what special challenge does it present uh, preparing for a team that you have no game film on and not any from last year either? Uh, yeah, it's a great challenge. You know, they have that film on us, um, but we also have that one game on them where they've seen us play, but they haven't played yet. So. Um, it's definitely tough when preparing. We have to take um, where their coaching staff came from and watch that film, watch their spring game. And um, they're a great, opponent, a great opponent, and I'm excited to play them this week. Nate, you sort of touched on this after the game on Friday, but uh, obviously to, to give you room to start, some other pieces you know, moved around to, to give you room to, to be able to play in the middle of this defense. Just how did those conversations go um, you know, in the off season to sort of say, hey, you're, you're, we're going to give you an opportunity? And maybe when did you feel comfortable at the college level, whether it was maybe last year as a freshman or maybe during spring ball or maybe it was Friday night? Yeah, um, so obviously they moved Drew to outside, and he took that really well. He's a great leader. Um, at first, he was—he took it a little hard, but you know he's a great leader. He's—he's he's great out there. Um, he's super athletic, makes plays. He's the only one of us that can go out there and be successful, um, in my opinion. Um, and to touch on your second part of your question, um, during camp, really, last year I was struggling. I was swimming. It's a lot—lot lot to learn coming in as a freshman. But I had great leadership, um, helped me get through the way. So coming into this fall camp, I was able to jump forward and make big, bigger leaps in understanding defense and offensive schemes. And I could say halfway through fall camp, I felt most comfortable. Nate, I knew you weren't around for like the peak of the Nebraska and Buff rivalry, but what have the coaches kind of told you about it? And are you, what are you expecting on Saturday? Um, I'm expecting a big crowd. Um, everyone's going to be pumped up. The coach can be pumped up. Um, I've heard it's a huge rivalry. Um, obviously, they got the games playing everywhere around here in the Champion Center. Um, I was talking to Coach Hagan today, and he said he never lost to them. So hopefully, we're going to keep that tradition up. Um, and I'm excited. It's going to be a big game, huge crowd, and I'm, I'm excited. Nate, what is the challenge when you're preparing for a, a true freshman quarterback that you haven't really seen? And, and also, with Adrian Martinez being from Fresno, did you guys ever cross paths in high school at all? Uh, we did not cross paths in high school. Um, but yeah, there is a challenge. Um, we don't know what he's capable of yet. But also, he's a young player, as myself, and I know what that how that can affect um, and how that takes to be on the field. Um, he's a great player, obviously, playing, playing there in Nebraska. So we're going we're gonna to play him as a great player. Hey, Nate, have, have you heard any stories or have you experienced it yourself? Have you been chastised for wearing red? In the I have not. I, I honestly don't really wear red myself. Um, I don't think I have anything red in my wardrobe at all, actually. Have any of your teammates you heard any stories of anyone wearing red and being? Um, I have not, no. The offense was very effective on Friday night. How did the defense use that kind of cushion? Uh, and was it, were you able to freelance more or, or um, be more aggressive than it had it been a tighter game? Yeah, definitely. Um, our offense, first of all, came out and played great. Um, they had great leadership on the team. Montez was throwing balls. Um, young guys were making plays. Offensive line was playing great. And when we're up like that, we're able to 
kind of relax as a defense and not have to do too much. Uh, we can play our base calls and really work on the stuff that he's working on rather than um, being down and trying to make a big play. We can just rather get out there with the mindset of three and out, get the ball back to our offense. And, um, and I think that's what we did well. Obviously, you had half the crowd in your favor on Friday night. But what's your first start on, on the road going to be like for you? Um, it's going to be intense. I mean, I don't know exactly how much that stadium holds, but I've heard above 90,000. Um, so, and obviously, it's going to be their home game. So I'm, I'm excited. Honestly, I think that we'll thrive in that atmosphere, kind of have that pressure on us, will help bring us out our best game. Now, your father was a rugby player. Your sister was a college swimmer. Your brother was a college football player. What was what is sort of the competitive DNA in your family? Yeah, uh, you should be at our house for Thanksgiving, honestly. Uh, uh, it's intense. Um, as growing up, I always looked up to my I have two older brothers and an older sister who's super athletic. Um, and we always had that beat each other mentality, you know. So being a younger brother, I always had to compete harder to hang with the big dogs. So, um, yeah, in our family, it's, it's, it's pretty intense. Um, having my dad's rugby players, great foundation. He knows how um, athletics work and having him help me along the way is, is, is really nice. To follow up on that, so Thanksgiving, what are we talking about here? Is that, uh, you know, touch football? Is that, what, what, what kind of competitions is that? Uh, touch about? football turned to tackle football. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for Nate? Awesome. Thanks, Thank you. Nate.